What's up everyone, this is Dr. Webb here. Thank you guys for watching this video. Make sure you subscribe, new videos come in every week. And don't forget to visit my sponsors over at disabilityquotes.com. They've been helping physicians and also non-physicians uh, find the right type of disability insurance for the last 20 years. It's important, so definitely check out and make sure you get disability insurance. Uh, today's video is another day in the life video where I'm letting a medical student show you what, what it's like to be a medical student. Uh, Don, he's going to show you um, how he studies, what his day looks like, his couple of his workouts maybe. Uh, I'm not sure what he has in store for you guys, but I'm excited. Hope you guys are. If you or someone you may know who may be interested in doing a day in the life for me, email me, overcomingtheoddsbook at gmail.com. We'll see you next time. Hey guys, my name is Adnan from the Adnan A YouTube channel. I'm a second year medical student at a California MD school. And first of all, I just want to say thank you to Dr. Webb for giving me the opportunity to share a day in my life with you guys. And I hope you guys enjoy a day in the life of a medical student. So during the school week, I usually start off my day around 5 or 6 in the morning. I like to wake up early and I find that keeping a regular schedule helps me get into the studying and starting off my day easier. So I like to start off my day eating a healthy breakfast and I like uh, these oatmeal packets as well as uh, some fruits like apples and bananas. And I drink a lot of water when I wake up. So my school, like most school nowadays, is organized in organ systems and what I like to do is go through Boards and Beyond, which is an online review service, I have it open right here on my computer, and look through all the relevant videos pertaining to whatever organ system I'm on right now. I also like to look through the online review videos for Pathoma, which is another review service that focuses on pathology, and I use these two online resources to pretty much get all my basic knowledge in regards to whatever organ system that I'm learning about in school. After I go through all the videos, I'll look through first aid, which has all the high yield information that I need for the organ system. And it tends to be more of like a list format, so it's better to use in my opinion. After looking through primary materials like the online review video services, I usually don't look through lectures that much from school unless I need to try to figure out what topics I need to study that aren't relevant to that particular organ system that we're studying in general. After I get through the first aid, the boards and beyond, and the pathoma, I'll start trying to drill down the facts that I need to memorize. And I do this through Anki, which is an online free flashcard service. Some of my classmates use things like Firecracker, but I prefer Anki. Just I just find the interface more uh, intuitive and more fluid, and it's a lot more customizable. So I'll go through Anki and uh, do a block of flashcards based on whatever organ system that I'm in. So yeah, I'm gonna study a little bit and then head off to class. Okay, so it's a little before 8 and I'm off to head off to class. I have class till 12 and afterwards I'll usually drive home real quick, like I live close enough to my place where I can just drive home, have lunch, and then go back to class at 1. If I don't have class at 1 or I don't feel like going and it's not mandatory, I will go to the gym right after, which I'm going to be doing today. And if I do have class and I need to go and I want to go, then I will go to class and go to the gym afterwards. But today I'm going to have class till 12, go to the gym, come home, have lunch, and uh, I'll see you guys then. I did a quick leg workout. Some people wonder if you have time to work out in medical school, you definitely do have time to work out and even make progress towards your fitness goals. The last two years gets a little harder, but especially the first two years, your schedule is pretty flexible so you can usually fit it into your day. So my first year, I usually worked out around five or six in the morning. During my second year, I usually work out later in the noon or the afternoon but uh, I have had to work out sometimes around like 11 at night if I had like tests or things like that. So you do have to be a little flexible and you don't have as much time to work out, but you can still work out and make progress. I'd recommend you keep your workout short and intense and have a lot of compound movements so you can work out multiple muscle groups at one time 
and also try to stay focused so don't go on like Instagram or Facebook while you're working out or they'll just take longer and waste more time. So now I'm gonna eat lunch and for lunch I have some mixed vegetables and some chicken. I usually meal prep vegetables and lean meats on the weekends and this allows me to save time and money on during the week and also to make sure that I'm staying on top of my fitness goals and I'd highly recommend you meal prep if you're trying to either gain muscle, lose fat, or even just maintain what you have and you're having a hard time doing it. So I'm gonna eat lunch right now and then get back to studying. So now it's the same thing, back to studying and I'll be doing Anki again, Boards and Beyond, and looking through first aid and put them as well. For Anki, there are two main free decks online that are really popular. One is the Bros deck and one is the Zanki deck. There's also the Pepper deck which focuses on Sketchy Medical which is an online review service that focuses on the high yield facts of pathology, microbiology, and pharmacology. The microbiology one is, is very useful especially. I don't use the other ones as much. So I do study throughout the day but I also take a lot of breaks probably more than I should throughout the day as well. And one of the things I like to do is watch YouTube videos. And one of the channels I like to watch is Dr. Webb, as you can see. Make sure you guys subscribe to him down below if you haven't and give this video a thumbs up. He's one of the great channels to watch when I'm trying to learn more about medicine and how residency is gonna be like and things like that. I also watch a lot of other popular YouTubers as well and probably spend a little bit more time than I should on YouTube. Every once in a while I do watch my own videos as well just to see kind of how the quality is and look for things I could improve on. Besides watching YouTube, which is one of my favorite forms of passive relaxation, I like to go on walks. I might just go on like a 10, 20 minute walk and either just to clear my head or reduce my stress, uh, burn a few extra calories, or sometimes I'll take my phone and use uh, uh, do Anki flashcards on my phone while I'm walking. So yeah, now I'm just gonna go for a walk and I'll come back and probably study some more. Hey, so I'm back from my walk and right now I'm going to be working on different non-classroom related things that I have to do this week. So there are three main non-lecture classes that we have. One is anatomy and for that, depending on the block, we might be in the lab for four hours or we might just be in there for like two hours or we might be in there every other week instead of every week. But for that, we basically have a list that gets sent out and I look up the terms on Wikipedia and other websites like uh, UMich has a good website where it talks about the different functions and innervations of different muscles, for example. And I'll show you the resources that I use for anatomy. Me. Wikipedia is always a great site to uh, either look up pictures real quick or just get a sense of the background of a certain structure like the innervation or the function or relevant pathology. For anatomy, I also like BioDigital. It has an amazing 3D model that you can maneuver around. You can look up muscles individually and toggle different structures. So for testing purposes, there are various online quizzes. One good one is the uh, Downstate Anatomy Portal. It basically has quizzes with dissections on them. Great for testing your knowledge. And sites like the University of Arizona Medical School have nice tables where they have the different muscles and the different functions and arteries, innervations, all kinds of different facts laid out for you nicely in a table. And I also like to draw the anatomy as well. Another non-lecture based class is uh, the OSCE or medical skills classes. These are basically doctoring classes where you go in and meet with a standardized patient actor. You basically do the history and physical of the patient who's presenting with a certain condition that's dependent on whatever organ system you're studying at the moment. And so I'll show you the resources that I use for that as well. We usually use Harrison's Manual of Medicine. So we'll look up the major issues relevant to our current block. Usually we get like one or two main diagnoses that we'll probably be focusing on this week with the patient. And this allows us to have an idea of the background and the diagnosis and the treatment of a patient and also how to examine them. So when we go in to examine a patient, we can ask targeted questions and kind of simulate how a doctor would assess a patient and diagnose them in real life. And lastly, we have a weekly clinical case. So we get presented with all the relevant physical exam findings and the history of a patient who has a case that's relevant to the block that we're studying is again. And we're trying to figure out the proper diagnosis, the workup, and the management of the patient, as well as make a presentation with different background information uh, covering the basic sciences and public health relevant to that uh, condition. So for clinical cases, we basically look up relevant symptoms and complaints 
as well as the, the diseases that we think the patient has on up to date and it has all the current recommendations for different uh, different symptoms and different diseases that a patient might have. It goes through everything like relevant background information, epidemiology, even like diagnosis and management. So what we do is we take all that and we turn it into a PowerPoint usually with Google Slides and we present it on Fridays usually at the end of the week. So last meal of the day is going to be this uh, vegetable smoothie. It's basically a salad that I just blend it up. It's a lot quicker than eating a salad. So I'm just going to finish my smoothie off relax a little bit and then study a little bit more. After that I'm going to take a shower and start getting ready for bed. Usually what I do at night before going to sleep is doing some form of art. I like to do art on the side and it's also a way for me to de-stress and to help me sleep at night. And I think it's great for people to have some sort of hobby that they're passionate about. It helps them de-stress uh, and have a life outside of medicine since medicine can be so demanding and life consuming. So that's going to be pretty much it for today. I hope you guys enjoyed it in the life with me. If you have any questions or comments for me, leave them down below in the comment section. I'll try to answer them. Thank you guys so much for watching and I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Take care.